And hello class, everyone. Welcome to joining. Uh, before moving on to logistic regression, um, I just want to ask a question. What kind of information do we remember about um, linear regression? Uh, one thing that I'm going to show you, one thing I'm going to tell you that linear regression spell with L-I-N-E. So I think it's highly related to something line. You know, that's, that's one good hint. What about anything else? As the class are joining, I will, you know, I, I want to get to know you guys a little bit more. How about, where are you? Um, Kruti? Kruti? Uh, I'm, I'm not good with names, but I'm, I'm trying my best. What do you remember about linear regression? Kruti Ashi Sha? Oh, I think she left. Oh, the pressure. Okay. The pressure. <laughs> How about you, Godwin? What do you remember about linear regression? Uh, class. Linear regression? Mm -hmm. I'll say um, it's, a, it's a classification method um, that is yeah. from basically this from 0 to 1 it kind of classifies everything 0 to 1 okay that, that's that I think oh um, nice nice uh, I think I think the explanation that you gave is more close to logistic regression but that's actually perfect <laughs> that's a good intro uh Mishra said, used to classify the data set, predict a value of variable based on the value of another variable. Okay, so linear regression, good, good um, explanation. Uh, definitely, I like it, I like it. Uh, but in the, the practical use cases, we're going to review where we can use linear regression and where we can use the logistic regression. And um, the thing that we're discussing, linear regression can be used for classification, and we're going to take a look at a visual, very simplified visual case of utilizing linear regression to do classification. But at the very same time, we'll realize why that's not uh, not the most ideal. Okay, there are different kinds of statistical methods that does better job at classification. All right? Yeah, give, the, give, a, give a thumbs up in the chat to make sure that you understand that. Oh, wow, a lot of people join. I appreciate that. Great. Let's start. You guys are awesome. Okay, so logistic regression, what is it? Um, let's review from linear regression because we are building on top of linear regression and uh, not the most accurate way to put it, but most simplest, easiest way of understanding. Linear regression turns into logistic regression, turns into neural networks, turns into chat GPT, okay? Not the most accurate, but it is one way of understanding. Now, in the previous time, previous time, a previous lecture, we took a look at how linear regression and you know, linear regression looks like in a 2D graph format. And on the visual, you can see on the front, we can see that uh, there's an orange line and there's a blue line. The orange line is the linear regression and the blue line is the logistic regression, right? We can already automatically see a little bit of difference. Um, in a linear regression, you know, it's just, it's just literally what it is. It? Any uh, question? Sorry, Professor, I was unmuted by mixing. Oh, oh, oh. Sure, sure. I mean, but if you have any questions, just you know, jump in, dive in anytime. Okay. Uh, it might be a better idea if you if you guys actually put a thumbs up in the chat before speaking up, uh, so so I know that you know. Okay, a question is uh, coming in, right? Per se, but it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Just ask questions anytime. Okay, going back, linear regression are awesome, and when we talk about linear regression, we can just you know the line that you see on the front of the front of the visual. That is not the only linear regression line that we can draw draw per se. Um, uh, one other concept that we saw previously is that different equation result in different kinds of line. And depending on what kind of linear, it's not what kind of linear regression. We learned that there are, and we're going to review um, different types of logistic regression as well as linear regression. Uh, but this is not, it's inaccurate to say different kind of linear regression. Just think of it as linear regression that has different math. I guess. <laughs> Uh, um, math in the sense where um, uh, um, simply if you have a plus sign in mathematics it increases if you have a minus sign in mathematics it decreases it, it's a simple simple format you know you know the line that then you've seen on the above um, purple is decreasing blue is increasing so just understand it as uh, different math can be involved of drawing different kind of linear regression so and that applies to exactly the same as logistic regression so when we think about logistic regression or the visuals that we have saw, uh, for a simplified reason, I only showed one logistic regression curve, but individual, take a look at more deeper look. The steepness of different logistic regression can exist. 
Again, going back to the same argument, this is not the different type of different type of logistic regression. You can't really say that. This is all same type of logistic regression. But we can understand that as um, there's different mathematics involved. Okay, simple enough, is it? So when we, when we look at you know different equation, we'll generate different lines. Hence, these kind of um, steepness, different curvatures in the logistic regression uh, is resulting from different mathematics. Understood? That's a pretty, very simple concept, right? Thumbs up. Welcome, welcome. Join in the class. You guys, at least I need one uh, student to put up thumbs up because I, you, know, you guys need to understand this to <laughs> move on. So <laughs> it's everything is building block from here. All right, all right, all right. You guys are awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at the. Um, we don't. You you guys are not gonna be tested on. Um, well, you guys are going to be tested on mathematics. It is what it is, but it's not gonna be so much advanced. So, uh, for example, like remembering this equation and acknowledging that the uh, mathematical equation used um for drawing different kind of you know, log logistic regression function lines, you know, you can see that uh, depending on the mathematics, the steepness of the curvature can be more vertical or it could be more loosened per se. Um, but the whole idea here is that um, is a uh, different equation result in different lines per se. Now, in the previous lecture, not in this section, but in, the, in another section, a student very, very well, you know, I think I think the student was very well informed regarding logistic regression, had pointed out the fact that um, when it comes to logistic regression, uh, I'll just kind of review a little bit. So when we take a look at this graph, uh, we can see a clear difference, you know, one visible clear difference between the linear regression and different types, not different types, but different logistic regression involving different mathematics have a clear difference. Linear regression just, you know, just start from negative infinity and just grows into positive infinity, right? That's the straight line, right? Logistic regression doesn't actually start from negative infinity. If you take a closer look into it, uh, when we track the line of logistic regression, you can see that it approaches zero, but it never crosses zero, right? Do we agree? This is very important that we agree. And this, this, the fact that logistic regression has a different shape will play a critical role on how and where it can be used where linear regression might fail. Okay. Again, going back, linear regression starts from negative infinity goes to positive infinity, right? If it doesn't have a particular stopping point. Logistic regression does not start at negative infinity. It seems to start close to zero, but it has a maximum growth level of one. Okay, sounds good? All understood, right? And that, the reason why that is happening is because of the operation exponential. Um, if, if, if you were paying close attention to the mathematical equation that I showed before, um, you will notice that there is the uh, logistic operation or, or hold on one second, E, the natural log E, natural log of E. And that is a logistic um, exp exponential function where we only view the mathematical, um, the shape of that function itself. It looks like the blue graph that you can see on the visual on the, on the, on, on the front, on the screen. And as you can see, observe, um, you can see that the blue graph does start uh, somewhere near in the zero, but it never crosses that zero line per se. It, it, it starts from negative infinity and slowly goes into certain, you know, it's, it's like a curvature, right? Right. And that part where it's never touching the vertical line or never going beyond the vertical line, um, simply put, uh, the characteristic of um, natural log function gives the strength to logistic regression to make better classification decisions. And when we actually see uh, this function or logistic regression in play, the visual that you see in the front, uh, there is x and f fx. In mathematics, we utilize the, the x symbol as the input and the fx as the output. So the way to correctly read uh, this visual is that you see the white dot that's moving from left to right to left to right. Right now, it's at literally at the most left to far point. And it started from right, and it's decreasing, 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 decreasing. And, you know, that that, that GIF re repeats on. 
the most important part that we should um, observe here is the relationship, be relationship between X and F and X. Okay, as X approaches negative 10, right? It's going negative 10. Fx is approaching a value of zero, but it never go down zero. And this visual will also work in the opposite way. If as the x is approaching 10, fx will approach what value? Godwin, you, you, uh, tell me. Uh -huh. Exactly. I should, I'm seriously thinking of, you know, you know, giving up bonus points on these quiz. So look out for that. <laughs> look out for that. It's, it's a really good idea to <laughs> answer the question. Anyway, so zero, a good job, God, and one, right? Like it, that has the limiting factor. So uh, we will uh, put a uh, leave it that for now. We're going to come back to this, uh, but logistic regression. So at the end of it all, what is it? We can simply understand logistic regression as a statistical method that is used for binary classification problem. Okay, this is the most simplest. A basic text description. Obviously, <laughs> in the later part, we're going to see different types of logistic regression that can do, uh, do more than just binary classification. But, you know, it, it builds from here. Okay, before moving on, any questions, concerns? This is the first chapter. So what was that binary? Uh, uh, can you go back to the pre previous slide? Sure. What's that so binary classification? Can you just... I just... Oh, okay. Um, First of all, Kumar. Thanks for speaking up. Okay, um, binary classification problems could sound like a terminology that's complex, but it's very, very easy. Just yes or no, left or right, cat or dog. And the way oh. that we do binary classification problem um, uh, in while we're interacting with the AI, so we could ask uh in, in this specific case the ai is just logistic regression okay we could ask um is this object within this image a cat or a dog right that is one way of identifying um binary classification cat or dog oh. following me yep got got thank you got it right but in the logistic regression we ask it in a bit of a more of a different format so if 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 logistic regression was a person and if that thing was in front of me i wouldn't really we wouldn't be asking uh, is it a cat or is it a dog the specific question that we are asking to this ai is given this image that contains certain object okay it's gonna contain either dog or a cat what is the probability of this image containing a dog. I'll repeat that one more time. We do not ask logistic regression, is it a dog or is it a cat? We don't ask that. We ask this question. What is the probability of this image containing a dog? Now, that simplifies the answers of what a binary classification problem is. Okay, But I will go a little bit further. And when we ask that question of asking probability, how would you answer it? Come on, actually, you know, let's let's do an interactive discussion. So, if you were a logistic regression AI, okay. and I ask you this question, the same question, come on, give me the probability of uh, this. Just think of an image. This image containing a, a dog. What answer could you give me? Uh, like we, I'll look at the features first of all. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Oh, going. go on, go on. Yeah, I'll identify that how it looks and all. Basically, this this is what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. And, and the final answer is. Yeah, that's the final answer. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um. Uh. Kruti. For sure. What's up? Uh, yeah, I think uh, to answer this question, I mean, uh, what yeah. I would suggest is if, if, see, if it's a binary classification problem, so it means there are two options. It can be either a cat or a dog. So right. the probability should be 50 50, 50%. Nice. Nice. Oh, both. Thank you. Both yeah. answers are nice. Um, I like the Kumar. I like Kumar, your answer because <laughs> you said uh, uh, you would. Take a look into deeper into image. Um, so that 
is a simplified format of what you know those type of networks or AI that's really good at image classification that's in the news saying that it's better than human beings. Um, a lot of those AI, the way they detect an object within the image, they actually do exactly what Kumar have described. Uh, they take a look at small sections of the image and understand its feature per se, um, because the features that make up of a dog in an image is different from features that make up of a cat in an image. So a dog could be bigger, a dog could have more um, rounded face, uh, bone structure, while a cat could be smaller, opposite of, you know, round bone structure face. Uh, uh, AI analyze these kinds of features. So good job on that, Kumar. However, um, I actually appreciate Kirti's answer because uh, the question was, what would be the probability? And she mentioned it would be 50% cat and 50% dog. That is a very valid way of answering the question. In logistic regression, it does not, it does not actually tell us this thing have a 50% chance of being a cat, 50% chance of being a dog. It actually tells us one number. That number would be, um, in this image, there's an 85% chance of this image containing a dog, but never mentions the cat. But because um, we know that with it, the, with, because we know that this AI is trained to predict cat or dog, we can utilize the answer that the logistic regression gave us to actually calculate the probability of the image containing a cat. And the way that we do this is 100 minus 85. The logistic regression told us there's 85% chance of this image containing a dog. 100 minus 85, 15% chance of having a cat. Okay, so both answers are correct. I like where you guys are thinking. Um, and discussion is always fruitful, uh, but that is the correct answer, okay? Um, the logistic regression only gives one number, uh, which is, in this case, in the example case, the probability of an image containing a dog. There could be 85% chance, there could be 15% chance, there could be 25% chance, etc., etc. And we can utilize that number to calculate the probability of, um, you know, it's because it's an inverse relationship. Oh, wow, great, great discussion, great discussion. So let's move on to what can it do? So now we have this whole curiosity regarding logistic regression, and we have a basic understanding of what it does. At the end of it all, um, by uh, logistic regression is not limited binary classification. However, it is very easily um, approachable when we think of it that way. So should we move on to the left? Should we move on to the right? What is the right answer? Yes or no, et cetera, et cetera. That would be falling under the category of predictions, right? We have given data, we have um, cer certain kind of data that we have observed. Now, utilizing logistic regression, what kind of decision should we make? Is it yes or no? Yes or no? This pattern is quite similar to linear regression. Uh, remember, in linear regression, we can uh, do prediction of real number. We're going to see some application usage on later side. Uh, but we also discuss the analysis part of the um, linear regression where we can utilize the coefficients that was found to draw the best fit line within our data. And by utilizing that coefficient value, well, we can um, make statistical decisions such as, you know, remember one example that I gave was if you are a Canadian government wanting to do a study on a dollar increase in family average family household income, how much of that increase of income will translate into spending, right? And we can calculate the correlation and say, okay, a dollar increase on family household income result in 85 cent increase in their um, expended or spending more money. Logistic regression uh, can do that, but when it comes to analysis, it, eh, it has a little bit of an asterisk. And we're gonna go more deeper into why logistic regression on analysis might have limited functionality. Just to give a little bit of review on where a linear regression can be used. So in a, in a healthcare setting, just think about it in a healthcare setting, we are measuring blood pressure level. And um, depending on the age, uh, this is a very simplified graph. It's not really verified health data. 
but we can make assumption. Let's say as you get older, um, you have your blood pressure level just increases naturally. <laughs> okay, that's in this small world assumption, that is the assumption. Um now we can use linear regression to draw the best fit line and a doctor or a medical individual can utilize that linear regression and say, okay, this patient is age of 70. What is their blood pressure level as a number of like 50.5? I don't know how, how blood pressure uh, units are measured, but you know, 55, 85, whatever, whatever. However, when it comes to diagnosing, when a medical professional utilize that information to diagnose an individual whether they have certain conditions or are they healthy or not, that diagnosis can't be done by uh, linear regression. It's more like categorization, right? Categorization. Where does this patient's disease fall into? Like which kind of category of disease uh, does this patient fall into, right? That's categorization. It's a different thing that we're predicting compared to the raw number of blood pressure level compared to what kind of disease it is. Understood? Maybe not. So let's take a look at another um, application. So in a social media world, uh, there are, if anyone does YouTube, you saw this, take a look at uh, this example, this uh, predicting or estimating. Well, this is not predicting. It's just showing uh, how much of a view your video got uh, over the time that your video was on a YouTube platform, right? And I guess utilizing the same knowledge, we can draw the best fit line, whatever, whatever, and give that linear regression, you know, the video has been up for 32 hours. Give me the estimated view uh, of the video, right? Then it's gonna spit out some number, maybe thousand view, 10K, 100K, uh, 20K, but it's a raw number. But now let's flip this problem of prediction into a categorization. So each video, depending on the country, depending on their culture aspects, some content might be appropriate for a certain demographic of people, while uh, some content is not. Now that is categorization. You can't really do that by linear regression, right? Like ideally you want some kind of system that categorizes the video into PG-13, PG-18, PG-18+, plus, et cetera, et cetera, right? That is categorization. So that's how logistic regression is used. Now, before moving on to analysis, um, are we clear or are we getting a stronger understanding of, you know what, linear regression, logistic regression, they're a little bit different. I know where they differ and where they can be used differently. You know, are we, are we comfortable with that? Are we comfortable with that? Either chat or the thumbs up. Great job. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so analysis. This part's a little bit tricky. Review, just to review first. Um, we take a look at you know how linear regression can be utilized for analysis. You know, we first collect the data, we do the plotting, we do the analysis, find the best fit, you know, a coefficient, and utilize that coefficient to say, okay, one increase in dollar of family consumption, increase in and uh, result in eighty-five cent increase in their um expense, right? Simple enough. Nothing too complicated. Uh, logistic regression, inter interpreting coefficients in, in logistic regression is kind of less straightforward. Uh, and strictly speaking, it's because of this characteristic of multicollinearity. Now, this is outside the scope of this course, um, but just think of it as uh, linear regression or logistic regression first observe. You know, we have data that observes, and this AI observes that input data and make prediction, right? Whether that is like view time, how much, how many views that a video got, or is this video PG-13, PG-18, or whatever. Multicollinary is um, a phenomenon where the input data, the data that we're giving to the AI uh, are highly correlated with one another. So when making predictions, utilizing that variable, it's really very hard to exactly tell Oh, um, the prediction was resulted because of variable A or variable B. Because variable A and B, they're very, very similar. That means they're uh, highly, highly correlated. Think of it as this. It's like, okay, there are some statistical properties uh, that makes analysis of logistic regression a little bit tricky and not straightforward. When we you know, when we take a look at um, what can it do in a more of an industrial level, what what are people doing with logistic regression? They are generally using it for prediction. I mean, I only saw a couple of cases that is used for analysis, 
But if you want to do analysis utilizing logic regression, uh, you probably use more advanced uh, method to perform analysis. So simply put, what can it do? Logistic regression can predict categorical outcomes. Categorical outcome. This is very important. This is not going to change. The important fact is categorical outcomes, okay, by understanding the connection between variables. Okay, so it's not like linear regression where we're predicting raw blood pressure level is categorical. That is very important. Okay. Okay. So before moving on to different types of logistic regression and, you know, the connection between logistic regression and neural networks and a little bit more depth into neural networks, any questions, concerns? The most important part here, logistic regression, categorical prediction. Can I pick on you guys? Is that okay with you guys? I want to get to know my students a little bit better. Mihak. Okay, I'm going to butcher the name. Sorry, but I'm just going to try to say it. Mihak Ma. Ma Majan? What, what do you think about it? What is that? So what, what do you think about logistic regression? Like, or the topics that we cover until now? It could be in the chat. You don't have to speak up. Um, yeah, let's, 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 be, let's be patient. Just type in. Or maybe say. Yeah, so by understanding the relation between the levels. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I think your mic a little bit far, so I couldn't really hear it. Did you say? Oh, okay, so, uh, no, just think, uh, regression, like right? Un re logistic regression understands the input value to do yeah. to perform. Predict uh, Exactly. Predict. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a round of applause. A round of applause. Uh, very attentive student. I like that. I like that. Well, next time, uh, speak a little bit closer to my, or we can chat. No worries. No. But thank you. I really appreciate uh, the answer. I, I do. Okay. So let's move on. Now, logistic regression. There are different types. It's not, it's not, it's not just like, oh, wow, we're done with the logistic regression. Um, we don't need to know how to utilize all type because in all honesty, um, going back to the more of an industry experience, uh, there's a lot of more advanced method. At this point, there's so much more advanced method. Um, it's very important to understand the foundation, uh, but not. I don't think logistic regression, all type that we're going to discuss over here are not really utilized. So, But just understand it as like there are different types. So linear regression... Um, in a very simple format, when we draw different kind of lines in a 2D graph, uh, the assumption was that there is one input and there is one output, right? In, in a 2D graph, there's the, excuse me, one second. In a 2D graph, you can see that in a horizontal and vertical line, you know, in, in linear aggression, uh, in the left, the, the, the visual that you can see on the left, the assumption, the simple assumption is that the horizontal line, the horizontal line is the input value. And a vertical line, the vertical line is the output value. So in, in this assumption, there's only one uh, input value, which is the X axis and the one output value, which is the Y axis. But if you look at the visual on the right, there's two X axis, right? There is three dimensional plane. It's not one, a one dimensional line is, uh, um, is uh, no, it's two dimensional plane. It's not one dimensional line, right? And it's draw in a 3D dimensional, uh, three dimensional um, plot per se. So in that case, what linear regression is doing is taking into two variables, is x1 and x2, to make an outcome. So a practical example of this is that uh, Dave, uh, we're running a company, we're a CEO, we want to estimate uh, the runway of our company, basically how much money do we need to raise for funding, et cetera, et cetera. And in order to do that, we need to know the salary for each individual employee. And this is Dave, our software engineer, who's really good. Uh, and by we are using a very simplified equation of, you know, depending on the workers hours, how much hour they input, their salary will be adjusted, right? That's one input value for one output value. The number of hours that an employee has worked is the input value and their salary is the output. One to one relationship. We can make them more a little bit more complex. We can make it more a little bit complex by incorporating another value. So not just the hours of work, but also expertise. So right now, what we're doing is um, um, when projecting or estimating a salary for a you know, individual with 40 years of industrial experience, their age uh, should be more into consideration for a accurate compensation per se, 
right? That was one example of uh, multiple types of linear regression. There's the one-to-one, -one, uh, but there's type of linear regression that utilize two variables, right? That this, this, this whole part is a simple review. Logistic regression does follow a similar foot footprint, but don't... Okay, we're going to go more deeper. So binary logistic regression. The simplest, logis the simplest logistic regression is, you know, think of it as predicting whether a patient has a disease or not. Is the object in the image a cat or a dog? And just as a side note, just as a side note, this, by the way, this is very quizzable. This is this information is very quizzable. Uh, when actually making predictions of dog and a cat, we don't, we do not ask the logistic regression. What's the probability of a cat? What's the probability of a dog? We only ask what's the probability of a dog. And utilizing the value, we infer the probability of being a cat. The same principle applies for this disease prediction. We don't ask. We generally don't ask um, uh, the logistic regression. Does this patient have uh, disease A and disease B? Rather, we set the problem in a way that uh, we only ask the probability of disease A, and we can use the inverse relationship to calculate the probability of, of disease B. Okay. Uh, and that is uh, very simple. Like this uh, mathematical visual illustration uh, kind of shows how that operation is done. So uh, remember logistic regression, do not start at negative infinity and go to positive infinity. There's a limited rate of growth. Uh, and the probability, and we discussed in a in the beginning part of, of lecture, especially things, Curti, uh, saying that, you know, there's a 50 chance of this image containing a dog, 50% chance of this image containing a cat. When we actually want to do the categorization, we do need to do one more trick where we first ask the logistic question, give me the probability of this image containing a dog. And that probability could range from zero to one. It could be 10%, 20%, 80%. Now, the final trick here is that depending on that probability, we convert that probability value into a categorical one. So simply said, if the probability of an image containing a dog is over 50%, over 50%, we're just going to consider that as like, okay, that image contains a dog, right? However, let's just say the probability of an image containing a dog is 49%. What this means, going back to the topic that we have discussed, we can calculate the inverse probability of, so 100 minus 49 is 51. So that image will be considered as a image that contains a cat rather than a dog using a threshold value, right? The threshold was 0 0.5. Is this, is, is the threshold part, is, is that confusing? Is that clear for everyone? Because that might be a little bit confusing. I understand if it's a confusing. So thumbs up chat. What, what do you guys feel about it? All right, you guys are smart. Let's, okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. <laughs> Multinomial logistic regression um the the this type of logistic regression and the next type of logistic regression that we're gonna see are a bit special because the internal workings of logistic regression um binary logistic regression multinomial logistic regression is pretty much the same um sure in a multinomial logistic regression we can have more predictive values so it's apple banana cherry uh, pineapples. So we're having more categories than two. It's not just binary. We're predicting uh, more categories, right? But here's the kicker. Apple, banana, cherry, pineapple uh, are not related in a sense they have order. When we think about categories, we can, we can also think about categories in different format. Categories that are unrelated to one another. What is your favorite drink? Maybe kombucha, maybe water, maybe milk, maybe coffee. They're not really particularly core, you know, related to one another. They can be think of as independent drink as their own. But now let's, I'm going to ask you this question. What is, if you're asking, a, if you're asking your customer, what is your satisfactory level of our company's service? Now there, there could be different kinds of categories, satisfactory, insatisfactory, neutral um or very satisfied i don't know depending on that but even if you take a simple case of satisfactory not satisfied neutral this is this is a tricky question 
when I mention these six words, so I'm going to mention six words, um, but I'm going to mention three at a time. So three word at the beginning and three word at the end. I want you to just tell me and to the class the first difference that you can observe between the first three words and the last three words. Okay, the first three words, you ready? Is yeah. banana, apple, cherry. Um, the latter three words, well, let me just think of a more clever, more clever example. Uh, ah, here we go. R movie star, uh, no, no, movie rating, five stars, three stars, one star. Okay, so we have that banana, apple, cherry, that's one, and the movie rating and the, and the separation. The first thing that comes to mind is, uh, fruits. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, a little bit more would be. <laughs> uh, I think uh, the first, okay. uh, first, first three things are like ca categories, like they are variable, and the other are response. Oh, oh! I didn't even think about that one. Huh? Oh wow! I didn't even know that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, and it is like, it has some oh. odd. Oh, yeah, go for it, go, go, go. Okay, um, thank you for letting me know. Um, Thar, Thar, uh, Tharshan actually, on the comment, gave a killer answer. Um, one has order, the other does not. One is ordinal. And that, so after multinomial logistic regression, that was the uh, exact word that I was going to say. Ordinal logistic regression. So just going back to the example, I like the answers. A little bit more details needed, but excuse me. Darshan, uh, kill it. If we take a look at the difference between apple, bananas, and cherry, and five star, three star, one star, for sure it's a response. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. So thank you for letting me know. That's like a completely different perspective. But does it make sense does it make sense for an individual it makes sense if an individual likes um banana and cherry right it makes sense we can't like banana and cherry but comparing to a five star rating and a three star rating it doesn't really make sense if an individual thought that movie was both five star rating and three star rating at the same time are you following me here so in a in a in a case where there are some kind of order in the categorical value that we want to predict, that is called ordinal logistic regression. If not, that's called multinomial logistic regression. Okay. Now, the in inner working mechanics of these um, logistic regression are pretty much similar as binary, but especially in a way that uh, the difference comes from the labeling and the category. Okay. A little bit tricky. But a good point. That's ordinal logistic regression where we have order in the category. Now, the final multivariable logistic regression is, uh, I would say, is like, yeah, it doesn't really have a uh, notion to the label. I guess it could be multivariate ordinal logistic regression per se, uh, but I never, I never saw anyone using that. But multivariable logistic regression, you can think of it as uh, we're not, we are, not only we are utilizing multiple input value but we're also able to predict multiple outcomes whether they are ordinal or not ordinal so um predicting whether, whether a patient has uh, multiple conditions in a single blood test that will be multivariate logistic regression some cool visuals that i want to share with you guys okay so what type of logistic regression are there we saw that there's binary multinomial ordinal multivariable Multivari multivariate, multivariate, oh, it's a hard word, multivariative. <laughs> I'll summarize this section as logistic regression is flexible to perform wide case of uh, categorization. Whether it has an order, whether it does not have an order, it can do both. So I, I, I would say this will be one way of understanding. It's like what it's, we're, we're choosing a layer. Uh, we want to get more detail or we want to be more abstract, but I think this layer of understanding of what kind of logistic regression are there in the world is actually quite sufficient enough. You know, if, if you talk with another data, data scientist, you might be able to say, oh yeah, well, the orders, you know, logistic regression can do that or maybe not. Wow. Okay. So 
all good. Like we covered quite a lot till now. How's the how's the class feeling? A lot of materials. Oh, we we didn't <laughs> we skipped next that, last ah oh, last week. So very informative. So thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you for the uh, comment. Appreciate that. Now we're gonna cover new networks. Before even going in to new networks, we need to let's take a step back. Let's take a step back. Let's take a step a little bit of step back. So we in our toolbox now have two statistical methods: linear regression and logistic regression. And by just utilizing these two statistical values, uh, not values, methods, we can do a a lot of predictions. I think about all the predictions that we can do utilizing linear regression. Think about all the predictions that we can do utilizing logistic regression. I mean, if we are predicting, if you want to predict a salary, which is a real floating point number, we can utilize linear regression. If you want to categorize something, we can utilize logistic regression. So these, I guess, like, unless there is like a very, very unique special case where a, a problem requires predicting other than the raw floating point value or a categorization. I mean, that could happen. But, you know, if it's not that's the case, we can utilize any of those two methods to get our, you know, solve our problem, right? Because why? Linear regression produces continuous value so that we, we can predict a whole wide range of continuous value, while logistic regression predicts the probability of binary outcome that can be utilized for categorization. So what is even the need for new networks? What was not the inspiration? We're going to take a look at the inspiration later. But what was the need per se? Um, what was the some limitations of those two statistical methods? Um, we're going to take a look at the limitation of linear regression. And we're going to see how logistic regression can overcome that limitation and by understanding how logic by understanding how what makes a certain statistical method more robust compared to another i hope that i can convince you guys that um new networks are needed so let's start imagine that we are a doctor trying to predict cancer either it could be a 